the sun is essential for us. We evolved with sunshine. All the fish in the ocean evolved with sunshine. We need the sun. It has a lot of benefit that our whole body needs. And when we block it, we're really harming ourselves. One of the things that proving that sun is not causing melanoma, sailors on ships, the ones with the inside job have more melanoma than the ones outside doing the works on the outside. From the Weston A. Price Foundation, welcome to the Wise Traditions podcast for wise traditions in food, farming, and the healing arts. We are your source for scientific knowledge and traditional wisdom to help you achieve optimal health. Hey, Hilda here. We have been told that the sun is harmful and that we need to protect our skin from its rays. But the chemicals used in sunscreens are actually more harmful to us than the sun. Indeed, they are harmful to all life on the planet. This is episode 374, and our guest today is Dr. Elizabeth Plourd. Elizabeth is a clinical laboratory scientist who recently released her second book on the dangers of sunscreen. It's called Sunscreen's Biohazard 2. Proof of toxicity keeps piling up. Today, Elizabeth explains the dangers of sunscreens, how, for example, they do not prevent skin cancers, but rather promote them. She explains how we absorb the chemicals into our bodies, disrupting our balanced hormone ecosystem, among other problematic consequences. She talks about the problem of swimming pools where the chlorine mixes with the chemicals in sunscreen to cause even more damage to the body than each of these would do on their own. She also explains why spray sunscreens are particularly dangerous for us since we inhale the particles into our lungs and why zinc oxide isn't a particularly good type of protection either. That said, Elizabeth does offer ideas for how to get the sun in a healthy way. She describes how we can protect ourselves from burning, for example, without the use of sunscreens. We can use coconut oil instead, for example, or eat a diet high in antioxidants. We can even allow the skin's own melanin to provide protection. Before we dive into the conversation, I wanna invite you to come hang with your people this October in Knoxville. It's the Wise Traditions Conference, the one that nourishes in every way. I'm telling you, there will be nutritious food, inspiration, healing wisdom, new friends, and more. I am so excited. Sign up now for the early bird pricing at wisetraditions.org. The dates are October 21st to the 23rd. And speaking of new friends, we've got Catherine Austin Fitz, who's going to be speaking, Tommy John, and other folks in the lineup. You'll love to hear them. So register now. And a shout out to Bubble MB. Bubble MB has more than 150 different products to choose from, many of which are USDA certified organic. Their products include organic insect repellent, organic body butters, and palm-free soaps with really simple ingredients and compostable packaging. They've got facial cleansers, lip balms, the works. And Bubble MB is the world's largest line of USDA certified organic deodorants, For all skin types, our family is just getting started with them. We've got Pit Putty and Pit Perfect. Yes, very punny names, but they're coming from a company that we can trust. So go check out Bubble and Bee at bubbleandbee.com for lots of information from exposing greenwashers to 15 years worth of information on cosmetic chemicals. And Bubble and Bee customer service can't be beat. You can literally email the owner of the company directly, and it doesn't get better than that. So go to bubbleandbee.com to check out their products and use the code WISE at checkout for 15% off. That's bubbleandbee.com and the code word WISE. This is Holistic Hilda and you're listening to Wise Traditions. Welcome to Wise Traditions, Elizabeth. Thank you so much. I so appreciate being able to have the opportunity to share my research that everybody in the world needs to know. So thank you. Absolutely. We spoke some time ago about your first book on sunscreens. And I know in 2019, you published a second one called Sunscreens Biohazard 2, Proof of Toxicity Keeps Piling Up. Why did you decide to write the second book? Because the first book pointed out all the hormonally active sunscreen chemicals that were really harming us, harming our reproduction, harming animals, fishes, reproduction. It's just It was so absurd. 
And so what they did was they switched to what they called KidSafe. It's zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. And it's not kid safe. And the more I researched to write an article for your Western Price Journal, the more upset I got and wound up with 90 pages on my computer. And my husband says, you've got another book there because it's imperative that people understand these are not kids safe. These are also very harmful to the ocean. There is no sunscreen chemical that is safe. None. Wow. Well, I can't wait to do a deep dive with you into those chemicals because you're right. Last time we talked about how there are hormone disruptors and the sunscreens, and now you're saying that the switch they've made is not for the better, even though, of course, they're advertising it as such. So let's start with BP3 or benzophenone 3. Talk to us about what that chemical does. It's very hormonally active. It makes the fish intersex, they call them. Their ovaries material gets mixed up with testicular material. And they even call the fish intersex because they, they even quit spawning. And this is what we're seeing in our kids. Our kids don't know if they're boys or girls. And very, very strong anti-testosterones in these sunscreens. And it's now in our water. So even if they don't use sunscreens, they're drinking it. And it's just absurd what has been allowed to happen because the bottom line is that the sun does not cause melanoma. They have never proven it. The research never has been able to prove that. And they've never been able to prove that sunscreens prevent it ever. And yet it's a multi-million dollar industry around the world destroying ocean life and destroying us, destroying our babies. Well, why would they put this chemical, we're talking about BP3 specifically right now, why would they put that in the sunscreen in the first place? What is it supposed to do? To block the UVB. The UVB is what causes the sunburn. And so UVB, it's blocking that. But the problem is when you block UVB, you're blocking your body's ability to make vitamin D. So now we have a worldwide vitamin D deficiency disorder. And vitamin D is essential for us. It's very anti-cancer. It does many, many jobs in our body. We need the vitamin D. And so babies are being born with rickets. Rickets came about during the Industrial Revolution where mothers and kids didn't get outside to get vitamin D. So rickets was a terrible thing until they finally realized it was the sun that helped us create our own vitamin D. And then they started putting vitamin D into foods to help promote that too. It's like we've built this little bunker to shield ourselves from the sun, but the bunker is doing us more harm than the sun itself. Absolutely, and more harm to the planet also. So all the ocean life needs sunlight, and all these sunscreen chemicals block them from getting the sunlight because it forms this film over the ocean. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's just horrible. And then I learned to scuba dive 50 years ago, saw the gorgeous, gorgeous corals and beautiful fish and the great turtles. And now the corals are dying. The fish just aren't as pretty. And the turtles have huge tumors on their backs. It's just a tragedy what we've done. The other thing that's absurd is that it's in the water. So the fish absorb the sunscreen. And so when we eat the fish, we're eating sunscreen because it's in their muscles. Oh, it's so alarming. Let's get back to some of the specifics on the chemicals. I noticed in your book, you mentioned cinemates, which have the abbreviation of OMG, which I find very appropriate right now. (laughs) OMG and OG. Talk to us about what cinemates do. So each chemical has its own toxicity and all of them are toxic, toxic to life, toxic to reproduction, especially. And they get into mother's milk, so our babies are drinking them. And this is what we've got to stop. We really do. It harms almost every level of our body because these are toxic chemicals that we were not designed to have in our bodies at all, in any way, shape, or form. And are they all then concocted in some laboratory somewhere? Yes, they are. The thing that gets me, too, is that I read an autobiography of Agatha Christie, who the famous mystery writer who took a worldwide tour in 1920s and went to Hawaii. And she said it was so strange because everybody there smelled like coconuts. 
they had already learned that coconut oil itself would protect from the sun. There are all types of foods and antioxidants, all the reds and purples, all the deeply colored foods that help protect us because our bodies are designed. The antioxidants come up in the skin when the solar radiation hits the skin. The antioxidants come up and protect the skin from any damage. And when you start turning red and burning, you're out of antioxidants. It's just that simple. And then we just need to replace the antioxidants. So if we will use antioxidants in our diet, which I know your whole organization is so into healthy diet, the antioxidants are part of protecting the skin and the sun. And instead of destroying ocean life and harming our babies, the more staggered I am that this has been allowed to happen. And pharmaceutical companies that are making millions, millions and millions of dollars off this are not about to tell you. But the research, very clear. They've never proven the sun causes melanoma. They've never proven sunscreens prevent it, ever. Wow. Well, I'm so glad you mentioned diet, Elizabeth, because I do want to talk about some solutions in the next part of our conversation. But I do have one more question before we get to that. I understand from your book primarily that spraying on sunscreen is even worse than just lathering it on. And every time at the beach, I get a whiff of it downwind of somebody spray, spray, spraying it on. Talk to us about what can happen when you use a sprayed sunscreen. Right. Well, you're breathing it in and it goes in through the lungs, in through those tiny little cells in the lungs. And so we don't want to breathe this into our bodies. It, it goes faster to our brains when we're breathing it in and causes damage up there. So the spray sunscreen should be totally banned because you're right. If you get downwind of it, you're inhaling it. And the people who are using it, the whole family is inhaling it. And I imagine this would be especially dangerous for the little ones. Absolutely. Absolutely. They really don't have the immunity that we've built up. And their brains are still developing, right? This is true. They're developing until the age of 25. And so we're harming their brains with the sunscreens, all the chemicals that are in all the products now, in the clothing and in our foods. We're harming ourselves on a mass level. And you mentioned zinc oxide earlier. That kind of surprised me because I feel like some people in my health circles think, well, that's a natural option to just kind of slather on some zinc of some sort. Is that still not good? Can you explain why? Well, that's the whole second book. Everything in there is talking about how bad zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, they're very bad. They go to the brain. And in order for it not to be a white paste, they bring it down in size to trick the eye so it doesn't see it. But that's down to nano and micro size. And they say that if you can't see it, it's down at that size. It's one five thousandth the diameter of a human hair. And they're saying, well, we're only micro, we're not nano. Micro causes just as much damage as the nano. And so they're just trying to fool people with that. And tragically, there's been some banning. Hawaii tried to ban and other places tried to ban the Virgin Islands. And so what they're replacing it with is zinc oxide. And they have it in the planes, they have it in the hotels. But the zinc oxide kills the phytoplankton in the ocean. And that's the bottom of the food chain. So you're killing the bottom of the food chain of the ocean with the zinc oxide. Wow, it kind of reminds me of what happened with BPA, when people started saying, oh, this industrial chemical used to make plastic water bottles, for example, is bad for us, then the producers started making other types of materials. And so they're still bad. It's just a different name. So people think, oh, it doesn't have BPA plastic, then I'm okay. Right. They just substituted BPS, which is just as toxic. And they're not putting that on the label. No, goodness, no. All right. So let's go back to solutions. You mentioned diet. And I noticed in your book, you spent quite a bit of time explaining our body's own protective mechanism, melanin. Can you describe that a little bit to us? Melanin is really good for us. It's very protective. And this is why melanoma has increased in white-skinned people ever since sunscreens were introduced. That was the late 1970s, and melanoma has just absolutely increased year to year to year to year. But there's been no increase in 
the darker population in black because they have so much melanin that it protects the skin from any damage from the radiation from the sun. And this is a problem for them. It's so protective, they can't make enough vitamin D to be protective. So babies of dark-skinned people are still being born with sometimes with rickets because there's not enough vitamin D for their bones to form good and solid. Oh, are you saying their melanin, their natural melanin is so protective, it's also impeding the absorption of vitamin D? Absolutely. And then the tan, we really need to be in the sun to gradually tan because that's the melanin and that's protecting it. It's Our bodies are so well made. I mean, that's the protective mechanism that was put into our bodies to protect us from having harm. So we really need to do that. We need to start out in the spring and start getting a little bit more exposure all the time to gradually increase that melanin. Would you even give this advice to the most fair-skinned among us with blue eyes and blonde hair? Absolutely. I've had many people come up to me and even one woman, she showed me her arm. She said, I used to blister in 15 minutes in the Mexican sun. And she said, look, I just got back from two weeks in Mexico. All I did was eat a high antioxidant diet and I barely turned color. Absolutely. It's the same concept of how these antioxidants in our skin protect us from the radiation. Oh, so wonderful. So we need to have a diet that's high in antioxidants. We need to gradually expose ourselves to the sun so we can build up the melanin in our skin, have that kind of natural response. What else can we do to maybe protect ourselves from burning? Well, in my first book, The Sunscreen's Biohazard, Treat as Hazardous Waste, I have a whole chapter in there, a very long, detailed chapter of all the foods that have been proven to protect from the solar radiation. And it's all the brightly colored reds and purples and deep leafy greens that do protect it. I was amazed. Spices, all the spices are very protective, extremely protective. Coming up, Elizabeth explains why sunscreen actually backfires in terms of its objective, ostensibly protecting us from the sun's harmful rays, and why the sunshine itself is actually anti-carcinogenic. You're listening to the Wise Traditions Podcast from the Weston A. Price Foundation. We pause now to recognize our sponsors. Paleo Valley. Get all of the healing properties of apple cider vinegar into your daily diet without the fuss or the burn. Paleo Valley has developed an apple cider vinegar complex that has been shown to support digestion with the breaking down of proteins for better absorption, improving the blood sugar response, and more. They've also combined their apple cider vinegar with other healing spices like turmeric, ginger, cinnamon, and lemon for added benefits for digestion. Overall, this ACV complex improves high blood pressure issues, reduces heart disease risk, helps with muscle cramps, can help deal with fungal issues, improves satiety and lowers glucose and insulin responses, optimizes digestion, and may even help with heartburn. And of course, Paleo Valley uses all organic ingredients so you can feel good taking their products. ACV Complex can be taken before a meal in case you want to help liberate more nutrients. You can take it before bed to improve your blood glucose level when you awake. You could take it as part of a morning curb craving kind of drink or during fasting, after a big meal, basically any time of day. Check out their ACV complex at paleovalley.com and use the code WISE for 15% off. Again, that's paleovalley.com and the code word WISE. And a quick shout out to Optimal Carnivore. Organ meats are some of the most nutrient-dense foods on the planet, and our ancestors prized organ meats for their vital properties. Well, the guys at Optimal Carnivore have been working on a new product that includes grass-fed beef brain and lion's mane mushrooms in a groundbreaking formula called Brain Nourish. It is the ultimate whole food nootropic to build a better brain. These two ancestral superfoods have been used for centuries to improve brain function and overall mental well-being. They're now available for the first time in convenient capsules. Studies have shown that both ingredients are remarkable at improving cognition and brain health, both in the short and long term. They're guaranteed to have your brain firing on all cylinders for supreme focus, elevated mood, improved memory, greater clarity, and enhanced creativity. And of course, you can add to those benefits 
great health, vitality, and longevity, thanks to the highly nutritious superfood ingredients. Each serving has 1,500 milligrams of organic lion's mane and 1,500 milligrams of beef brain. They only use 100% real mushrooms, organic fruiting bodies, which are rigorously tested for active compounds. And the beef brain is sourced from the highest quality regenerative farms in New Zealand. The mission over Optimal Carnivore, as you know, is to make it easy for people to consume the most nutrient-dense foods on the planet. And they also plant one tree for every product sold, which helps the environment. So go check them out at amazon.com slash optimal carnivore. They currently have a grass-fed organ complex that contains nine organs, a grass-fed liver product, and the new Brain Nourish. Again, that's amazon.com slash optimal carnivore and the code WESTIN10 to receive 10% off. Again, don't forget to use the code WESTIN10 when you check out at amazon.com slash optimal carnivore. This is Holistic Hilda, and you're listening to Wise Traditions. So I get the idea from your book and from this conversation that you believe that the sunscreen is worse for our health than the sun. Well, what it's doing is it's giving you a false sense of security. So yes, you're not burning, but you're absorbing all the infrared rays, which go deeper, which cause damage into the skin. And so it's like a fool's errand. It's just absolutely the wrong thing to do because it allows you to sit in the sun two, three, four times longer than you would normally do there because you'd be out because you'd be turning pink and burning. This is the problem. This is why melanoma has climbed since they were introduced. And do you think the sunscreen itself is more carcinogenic also than the sun? Well, it's toxic chemicals. And I cannot believe that all these chemicals we're being exposed to are very toxic. They're not human. They're chemicals that are just altering so many things inside our body. There's no way to keep track of it. No way to look at all of the different changes that are happening. What would you say, Elizabeth, to the person who says, oh, my goodness, there are chemicals in everything. Everything is a chemical compound. Perhaps you're overreacting to this one product. Well, they tell you to put it on, what, every hour, two hours. So if you keep putting that on your skin over and over and over again all summer long, you're putting just massive amounts of chemicals on your body and your skin absorbs it. They try to say you don't absorb it. And that's just not true. They find it in the kidneys, the liver, the brain, the testicles. They, they find these chemicals everywhere throughout the body and then try to say you're not absorbing it. Well, that brings us to the subject of skin penetration of the solar rays, for example, too. So how deep do the UVB solar rays go, for example, in the body? They're just on the surface, just barely on the surface. That's why they cause the burn. And then that's why you block your ability to make vitamin D because that's from that UVB on the surface cells of the skin. The UVA goes deeper and then the infrared goes much deeper. And do those help the body produce melanin? Is that part of what happens if you let yourself be exposed to the sun naturally? It's only the UVB that makes you produce the melanin. It's not the others. It's the UVB that we're blocking. So those solar rays that are penetrating at different levels, they all have their purpose in the body, don't they? The sun is essential for us. We evolved with sunshine. All the fish in the ocean evolved with sunshine. We need the sun. It has a lot of benefit that our whole body needs. And when we block it, we're really harming ourselves. One of the things that proving that sun is not causing melanoma, sailors on ships The ones with the inside job have more melanoma than the ones outside doing the works on the outside. So we absolutely need it because it's the sunshine is very anti-cancer, essentially. The sunshine is anti-cancer. Yeah, because we make the vitamin D and the vitamin D is anti-cancer. That's so the opposite of what everyone thinks. As a matter of fact, I'm happy to report, Elizabeth, from my time at the beaches recently, that a lot of parents are avoiding the sunscreen, but I'm unhappy to report they're putting like long sleeves on the kids. Like they're still trying to block the sun in one way, shape or form. At least they're not putting the cream on the kids, but they're still stopping the sun's healing rays. Well, that's true. 
And that would be good right at the beginning of summer while you just expose a little bit more and more and so that they can gradually build up their own tan to protect themselves rather than have them burn right away in the first day at the beach. So there's a fine line there of helping the kids get the benefit of the sun. And here in California, where I live, teachers stand at the door and remind the kids to put on sunscreen to go out for a 15-minute recess. It just makes no sense that this has been allowed to happen. But the commercials that the pharmaceutical companies that make the sunscreens have put out, the commercials are incredibly persuasive. It's propaganda because they want their multi-millions of dollars. Even the one of the women who helped me edit my two books, she had just finished editing my second book and she calls me and she goes, I just saw a commercial and we've got to use sunscreen. And that's how convincing this propaganda is. Oh, so in other words, she had read all of your contents and she was still persuaded by this commercial. Right. They spend a lot of money on commercials to how can we convince people? It's such a belief now that the sun is what's causing cancers and melanoma instead of the sun is healthy and we need to be in it. Oh, you're right. It's absolutely like an entrenched belief. I try now and then to say a little something when I'm with people. I was with some people at a park this weekend. And this one guy's like, oh, I should put on the sunscreen. I said, not necessarily. And I tried to explain some of these things, but people have short attention spans. So it wasn't easy. But I noticed also going back to your book, I noticed that you also talk not just about the rates of cancer and in avoidance of the sun, how this can be leading to cancer, but also the use of sunscreens and how detrimental they are in that way. But you actually go so far to say that sunscreen may cause DNA damage. Can you talk to us about that a little bit? The kids safe one or the hormonally active ones, they do cause DNA damage. And nobody really knows. We're not 20 years out to see what the outcome of that is. But you can't damage the DNA without causing extreme harm to the body. Right. And that leads me to the next chapter where you talked about swimming pools and how filled they are with the sunscreen. I can just imagine if everyone's slathering on sunscreen and then they're jumping in the pool, well, then it all comes off in there, right? I moved to Southern California 40 years ago to an area that has 22 pools that are open 24 hours a day, 12 months a year. And I did that deliberately so I could swim every day. I love swimming and it's so good for us. 40 years ago, it was fine. But now that sunscreens are in the pool, I can't swim in them. I get such a headache. I leave the pool and I have such a headache for hours because it's all in the water there. So when you've got a lot of different people with a lot of brands of sunscreen chemicals, it is just a toxic filled pool. It really is. And the chlorine alters the sunscreen chemicals and some of them become even toxic poisons. And so our kids are swimming in a level that is just astronomical. So what other ideas do you have for getting this message out, Elizabeth? Boy, it's difficult. It really is. I've been trying to do this. And so sunscreen bans are happening, like I was saying, in Hawaii and Virgin Islands. And then the Palau off Indonesia, they've banned at least 10 of the chemicals, which is really great because they're whole survival depends on their ocean life because it's a bunch of tiny little islands. And so Hawaii and the Virgin Islands and all this, they're only banning a few of the chemicals, which is meaningless because all the other chemicals, they're all bad for ocean life. But the last time I was in Key West, their coral is just, there's nothing left. It's just all brown. It's just horrible to look at. Absolutely horrible look at. And I imagine sometimes when people look at it, they want to blame something else, like, oh, it must be climate change, right? <laughs> or something like that. Absolutely. And that's true. So the oceans have not really heated up. They heated up in 1999 due to solar flares, not due to anything we did. And with these toxic chemicals in the water, yes, indeed, the, the coral between the warmer water and the toxic chemicals, we did have a lot of coral death around the world, but we didn't have coral death in the islands in areas that didn't have heavy tourists. So if they didn't have sunscreen in the water, the coral didn't die. So it's not heating up. And the people who are trying to prove that due to climate change and 
changes in ocean temperature take down time-lapse photographers or cameras and put them on the ocean floor. And then you watch the coral die while they're going down there with sunscreen on themselves. And the coral dies in 96 hours. 96 hours. Yeah, they've proven that. So in the ocean is not warmer. Like I said, I moved to Southern California 40 years ago because I wanted to swim in the ocean every day from May 1 to October 1. And I did that for years and years and years and years. But the last 10, 20 years, I haven't been able to because it's too cold. The ocean temperature is colder. It's colder all the way to China. And we're not in global warming at all. Well, apart from your own personal experience, scuba diving and seeing the damage to marine life, and you've done significant research, but have you seen people who've stopped using sunscreen and seen their health improve or able to protect their skin naturally? Talk to us a little bit about some of the kind of anecdotal successes you've seen. Right. Yeah. It's really exciting to talk to very white Irish. Usually the Irish have the whitest skin. It's very exciting to talk to them, to have them experience the fact that they can be in the sun with a high antioxidant diet. It's just amazing. Diet is everything. If we eat what's right for our bodies, we can survive a lot and not have to resort to toxic chemicals. The thing about that is that people need to start that a couple of weeks before they go to the beach or go to some place where there's strong sun. But the antioxidant diet is very beneficial for all the electromagnetic radiation. So all our cell phones and iPads causing oxidation damage to our body. Every cell in our body is being oxidized from these radiations. And so the solar radiations cause oxidation. And so the antioxidant diet is very beneficial for the solar radiation and not having to use sunscreen, but extremely beneficial for all the damage that we're being exposed to with all the cell phones. And I feel like we went into detail on exactly what you're referring to in terms of antioxidant diet in the previous podcast. So I'll refer people to that one in the outro here so people can find that and get into that. It's so wonderful to know, as you said, our bodies are so well designed to manage the sun and to benefit from its healing rays and to protect ourselves from burning so naturally without chemical intervention. I love this so much. And now I want to ask you the question I like to pose at the end, Elizabeth, if the listener could do just one thing to improve their health, what would you recommend that they do? Well, change their minds. (laughs) The sun's harmful, that sunscreens are beneficial. Both are lies. So we need to abolish that, but also really bring in the antioxidants. Get your kids out in the sun, but also give them a lot of antioxidants before you get them in the sun. And definitely do that for weeks before you go anywhere. I would love to see juicing stations at beaches, but you really need to start in the antioxidant before that for several weeks to get these antioxidants into your body. Well, I love that idea. All the things you suggested, changing people's minds, leading by example, loading up on the antioxidants and the juicing station at the beach, especially. (laughs) So Elizabeth, thank you so much for your time today, for your insights and your book. We'll make sure to put a link in the show description so people can find you and these resources. Thanks again. Okay. Thank you very much. Our guest today was Dr. Elizabeth Plourd. To find out more about her resources and her book, go to her website, bestemfproducts.com. And I'm Hilda Labradagor, the host and producer of the podcast for the Weston A. Price Foundation. You can find me at holistichilda.com. And for the transcript for this podcast episode, visit our website, westonaprice.org, and click on the podcast page. And now for a recent letter to the editor from a journal. This person says, another useless test. Recently, a pharmacist told me two interesting things about the COVID-19 antibody test. First, the vaxxed are showing lots of false positive antibody results. They show that they have antibodies when they really don't. And the second thing she said was that many people who have tested positive for COVID and even had all the symptoms test negative for antibodies, and many who never had a single symptom test positive for antibodies. So basically the takeaway is none of this makes any sense. I already didn't believe that the antibodies could mean much if the virus theory is flawed to begin with. But now I know this is the case. 
just goes to show how imperfect modern medical science is. This is a letter from Michelle in Texas, who's a chapter leader. Michelle, thank you for your letter. If you'd like to write us a letter to the editor, feel free to write us at info at westonaprice.org and put letter to the editor in the subject line. We would love to hear from you on just about any topic. And thank you so much for listening, my friend. Stay well and remember that all shall be well and all shall be well and all manner of things shall be well. On behalf of the Weston A. Price Foundation, thanks for listening. We have many free resources to support you on your health journey. Visit WestonAPrice.org to find podcasts, articles, videos, and more. You can also find a local chapter near you for help in finding sources of great food. We invite you to support the Foundation's mission of education, research, and activism by becoming a member. Thanks again, and take care. Wise Traditions is a project of the Weston A. Price Foundation for wise traditions in food, farming, and the healing arts. The content on this podcast is provided for informational purposes only and is not intended to substitute for the advice provided by your doctor or other healthcare professional. It is not intended to be, nor does it constitute healthcare or medical advice.